Hi, I'm John Griffin, Microscopy Imaging Officer at the Australian Cancer Research Foundation's Cancer Biology Imaging Facility at the Institute for Molecular Bioscience on the University of Queensland's St. Lucia campus. Welcome back to our tutorial series on microscopy and image processing. In this installment, we'll be looking at how to use image shade to combine micrographs captured with color cameras such as the Olympus DP70. Again, we'll start by opening image shade, which I've already got open, and then we'll open our, our images. So I've got a blue image for the nucleus, which I can just drag onto my image J bar. I've got a green image for my actin, and I've got a red image for my mitochondria. Now, if you'll remember in our last installment, we were able to just combine images by going to image, color, merge channels, and here I can just choose the images that I want from my drop down. So it's smartly assigned the red channel to the red channel, the green image to the green channel, and the blue image to the blue channel. I'll click OK. There's my final image. All I have to do is go File, Save, and I'm done. But we can approach this in a more sophisticated manner. So here, my red image isn't just a red channel. This is an RGB image, so it's made of red, green, and blue. So just like we did before, I can go up to Image, Color, and split channels. And now here's my blue channel. And if you'll notice, there's a very faint blue signal there. I don't want that blue signal for my red channel in my image. So I'm just going to throw it away. Same thing for my green image. You can see I know this is the green channel because it's labeled green. And you can see I've got plenty of information there. I don't want that showing up in the green channel of my final image. So I'm going to throw that one away too. Now I just have a grayscale image of just the red information from my red picture. I can go ahead and save this one because I'll use it in my final figure. So I'll go File, Save, and I'm just going to save this to the desktop and I don't want that stupid thing after it. Red, we'll just call it Red 2 Grayscale. And I'll do the same thing. I'll go ahead and minimize this to get it out of my way. And we'll do the same thing with our green image. So it'll be image, color, split channels. I'm going to get rid of the blue channel. There's my green channel. That's what I want to keep. You can see how much was actually in the red channel too. I don't want that. So I'm going to throw it away. And I'll save my green one. So file, save or save as. We'll call this green2 underscore grayscale. Whoops. I'm going to get rid of that thing it tries to append at the end. We'll save that to the desktop. I'll minimize it to get rid of it. And then finally here in my blue image color split channels. There's my blue channel, that's what I want to keep. Here's my red channel, there's not much. Oh, that's my green channel actually. Not much there. Here's my red channel. Look at how much blue information seeped into my red channel. I don't want that showing up in my final image. So I'm going to throw that away too. And I'll finally save this, so it'll be file, save or save as TIFF. And this will be blue2 underscore grayscale. and without the blue suffix. We'll save that to our desktop as well. So I've got my three images. I just need to keep it straight in my head, which is which. Thankfully, I've named them intelligently, so I know which is which. And again, I can go to Image, Color, Merge Channels. Again, my red is in my red channel. My green image is in my green channel. My blue image is in my blue channel. And if I didn't like where they were, I could switch them around arbitrarily. So I could put my red channel in my red image of my blue channel and my blue image of my red channel if I wanted to. 
but we'll keep things simple. I'll click OK. There's my final image. Compare it with the other one. Looks pretty simple. Use either method that works for you. We'll need to save this before we forget. We'll just call it RGB2. Save it to the desktop. So I've got two versions that I can include in my final figure. In the next video, we'll look at histograms and making brightness and contrast adjustments to your images to get them looking their best and displaying your data as clearly as possible. Please feel free to ask questions or leave comments in the comments below. We want these videos to be useful for our researchers, so feel free to make suggestions in the comments for future videos too. If you work at the IMB, you can just come up to the imaging facility and talk to us directly, or you can email us at the usual addresses. Thanks for watching.